With reference to the self-employment programs, are there some states that in order to participate in those programs and help someone who's been unemployed innovate, uh, be an entrepreneur, set up a small business, that the states will have to change their laws? We firmly believe that some states are going to have to change their laws. As I'm sure you're aware, there are nine states who currently allow it, but only six of them are active, actively using it right now. But we think that states will be able to make those changes in enough time because you've been generous enough to give us enough time until 2015 to actually do this, that w those states will have time to do it. You've noted in your written testimony that those six states uh, that have used the program and the individuals that have participated in the programs uh, have a much better success rate than others in actually staying employed in getting a small business, as risky as that is, uh, underway and going. Can you tell us a little about the potential of these self-employment programs? Well, uh Congressman, we've done actual research following up in these states, and even if folks weren't able to open their own business because of credit problems, you know, or things that they couldn't get right then and there, these programs are five times more likely to get a job and keep it. And so the lessons they learn in these entrepreneurship activities really make them a better candidate for another employer. They understand all aspects of a business. So we think it's a win-win. We think it would be great if they could get their own business up and going, but we definitely think this gives them a leg up in competing for jobs that would be available in their local area. Madam Secretary, at a time when we have made significant economic progress but still have a good ways to go to get the unemployment rate down, what is the effect of seeing major substantial cuts in training and job uh, training programs uh, across the country? Well, certainly, sir, I have a bias here, but I think this committee in crafting the REA, RES provision that's now mandatory for states, uh, it's going to be really a shell game for our constituents, mine and yours, if we, if we gut the workforce programs so that when people go to get those reemployment activities, the services that they've been promised, there's no one there or the one stop has closed up. So I hope that we're able to show you quickly uh, the benefits of getting folks the, both the assessment and the services that they need quickly and get them back into the employment ranks where they're adding to the tax revenue and not taking money from the UI trust anymore. But I think it will be really terrible for all of us if we pull the, the, the rug out from under these folks that have been have suffered enough. Thank you so much.